When you were a kid, one of the things that really upset you was when someone on the playground didn't play fair. And as adults, there are still playgrounds where people don't play fair. And this installment of best practices for real estate so things don't get ugly is about playing fair. Very specifically, it's for agents who set the rules should not break the rules that they set. And especially for this video, I've made a cake and I'm inviting you all to have a piece of cake. I'm inviting you to have a piece of cake tonight at 7.30. Now, those of you who know my cooking skills, don't worry, Duncan Hines and I collaborated and it should be edible. But meanwhile, everybody here has a, uh, an opportunity to have a piece of cake tonight at 7.30. Those are my rules, makes sense. Some of you will go hungry all day long knowing you're gonna get cake at the end of the day. But along comes Susie from Fly By The Seat Of Your Pants Real Estate Office, and she's got a really hungry buyer. Somebody who's lost out on all kinds of houses and wants that cake now. It's willing to do a lot for it. So let's apply this directly to what's going on in the real estate market. A lot of agents, very strategically and tactically, are putting in firm remarks in MLS that Sellers will review offers at Tuesday at noon. And that's what they set when they put it into MLS on Wednesday. They do their series of open houses and show the property and all the buyers and agents who see the rules then submit their offers Tuesday at noon. Now, along comes Susie from Fly By The Seat Of Your Pants Real Estate who has a buyer who is ravenous and makes a new super attractive offer. She's willing to pay over asking. That offer has um, no conditions. They've waived financing. They've, um, you know, they're not gonna do a home inspection. It's a perfect offer for the seller. And so what does a real estate agent do who set those rules? Well, of course, you're obligated to bring all offers and present them to your seller. They do. The seller sees this. It's an offer they could have only dreamed of and takes it. And the next thing you know, everyone who's playing by the rules gets totally screwed. That's what happens. So how do you prevent this? Now, first of all, I want to let you know I'm not condemning or chastising anyone who's done this because I think it's become an accepted practice in some places. But in fact, is there a better way? Is there a best practice that we should all adhere to to really do the right thing for, for our clients and for all of the people in the real estate market. It's really important. So let's rethink this. Why does Susie and her buyer want to take the property off the market? Well, there are four reasons and things that you should talk to a seller about. The first is they're desperately concerned that the house will become more expensive on Tuesday at noon. So they wanna shut down the offer now before it gets more expensive. The second thing you have to go over with your seller is, listen, if they really want the house, but they won't make their offer a good past Saturday, then how much do they really want it? Are they really invested in this property if they're willing to walk if you don't take the offer? The third thing you need to talk to your seller about is, listen, if that really, in fact, is the best offer for the seller, well then, when they compete with other offers on Tuesday and it's the winner, then they'll know it's really the best offer. If not, the seller is going to get a better terms or price and that person won't win, or if it's great, they will. And the fourth thing you need to discuss with your seller is that when someone brings a bully offer, thank you, Conrad Zarini, that's a huge, big sign. That's a signal. That buyer and that agent are waving a big flag saying, we don't play by the rules and we'd like to shut this down now. Now, I can only say that People who don't play by the rules in the beginning usually don't continue to play by the rules for the rest of the transaction. Is it kind of like waving a flag saying, I'm going to be a big pain in the ass for the rest of the transaction? I'm just asking. Second of all, when you put an MLS that you're going to review offers Tuesday at noon, you're telling the entire real estate community that that's the rules of your game. That's how this is going to go. And when you don't do that, I'm going to ask you, did you lie to everybody? Did you misrepresent what you really plan to do? You've got to talk to your seller. And before you get weak, 
Don't be weak, as Terry Wagoneer says in Real Estate's World Best Ever video. Don't be weak and cave to that pressure. But the only way this has to work is when a good agent goes over these strategies and prepares a seller that this might happen. And if they do that, you, have, you only do that by saying, listen, if someone made a great offer before our deadline, are you going to want to take it? Are you going to shut down this process? Because if so, you are not a good candidate for delaying the review of offers till Tuesday at noon. If in fact you can be strong, we can do that. If you're willing to wait, then we're going to write it into MLS. It's as clear and simple as that. And lastly, I'm going to ask that agents be clear with the expectations they set in MLS. I've seen things written like, offers will be reviewed up until Tuesday at noon. Or uh, offers can be submitted up until Tuesday at noon or no later than Tuesday at noon. What are you saying? Are you saying that you'll review offers early? Or are you saying that you're reviewing offers on Tuesday at noon? You can't have it both ways. It's kind of like trying to be a little bit pregnant. Either you're reviewing offers on Tuesday at noon or you're not. As they say, you can't have your cake and eat it too. So if you subscribe to these practices, I think you will create the win-win in the marketplace. Every buyer will have a chance to see the property and make their best offer, and every seller will know that happened, which is the best thing if you're the fiduciary for the seller. And just on a final note, I called MLS Quality Assurance this week, and I said, what do you do when someone breaks the rules? And the woman, Chris, that I talked to said, you know, I do think that's fraud. That could be misrepresentation. We would recommend that someone who's upset that they closed it down early, contact the Board of Registration. Is your license on the line? I don't know. But them's fighting words. Be fair to everyone. Play nice. Give everyone a chance to have a piece of the cake at the time you decide. Have a great week.